A lot of times what makes that impact cool or special or more intense is the sound that happens right before it, right? Because you can have, or you can have, and it's like, you, you hear that before is what actually gives it the specialness in the character. Anyway, let's continue. Hey guys, Brayden here. Uh, today we're just going to look at a uh, sound design reel I randomly found on YouTube and give it our thoughts. Uh, this is most likely a beginner. Uh, this is someone I think they studied on uh, pyramid.com, which I don't know about, um, and they're learning audio production. Uh, this is a three-year-old reel, so I'm sure they've, you know, continued to grow over the years. Um, and do I'm doing this just purely out of education for anyone new to sound design, wanting to get into the field. Um, I do work professionally at, at a trailer company, so I'm unable to reveal any specific things that we do for trailers because I have a contract uh, saying I can't share trade secrets. But I do know a lot of general sound design tips, and I think these are things that, you know, when you start in sound design, it's very easy to get access to a whole lot of really cool sounds in a, in a built in a bot library. There's plenty of libraries, Boom Library, I would recommend. Uh, for beginners because they have a lot of everything. Uh, make sure you're buying stuff that was made within the last five years or so, maybe 10 years. There's a lot of old libraries out there that are great, but a lot of the sounds have been used very often and they're fine to use, but you may get caught with your stuff sounding a lot like other people's from over the last couple decades because everyone's had access to these libraries. So I recommend always looking for cutting edge libraries. I'll have some links below uh, to libraries that I recommend. And uh, we're not going to be doing as much hands-on sound design today. I just want to look at these reels and uh, just kind of give my thoughts. Um, I'm not trying to bash these people. I'm not trying to, you know, badmouth them. I'm just trying to give constructive criticism, just like I would give a junior editor who's working under me um, the same kind of advice. So uh, remember, sound design is always contextual. It's always subjective. It's an artistic medium. So it's not like what I'm saying is objectively correct. This is just my opinion. And uh, if you disagree with something I say, please, let's talk in the comments. You know, I'm open to it. And uh, I'm not going to say that I'm an expert. Uh, I've been doing this professionally for about seven years now. Um, but I still have a long way to go, and I'm just trying to make videos that I wish I had access to when I was first starting out, you know, six or seven years ago. So this is by Proto SFX on YouTube. This came out uh, about four years ago, actually. And uh, let's take a listen. Okay, cool. So let's let's stop there for a second. Uh, there's some really cool things here. They have some some definite cool ideas here, and this is something I find with a lot of beginners is they actually tend to not go far enough. Um, I think they get a bit intimidated and they think, okay, this sounds good enough. I'm gonna move on, and they're worried to keep going because again, it's just like music. You sometimes less is more, um, but with complex things like this, like slow motion, really visually intensive gunshots, um, slow motion bullets shattering on cheeks, uh, stuff like this, you know, you see the fire coming out of the barrel and then the shell being ejected in slow motion. Uh, it, what, what, what's playing to me sounds like about one third of what should be playing. And I'm not talking about necessarily um, the amount of elements you have playing because sometimes you can get the sound perfectly with just four elements, right? And mixers will love you if you're able to do that because they don't have to sort through dozens of, of sounds. But what I'm hearing here kind of just sounds like half done things that um, could really use additional detail, additional clarity, additional coolness. Um, so let's go back here to this to this bullet shatter here and just listen to this one more time. So what we basically have here is we have glass shattering, which is kind of the obvious thing you reach for for this. Um, 
uh, it works. It reads well. You know, people who aren't super into sound will will think you know it's, it's beautiful. And hey, it's kind of a creative thing. It shows a delicacy. Glass sounds a lot more delicate than metal. We have kind of a, a, a feminine face here, so it kind of works being more of a delicate thing. My problem is it kind of just sounds like a typical glass shatter. And then near the end, you can hear they started doing some reverse glass breaking stuff, which is cool. It kind of gives it a more surreal element, but um, it's really not. A, an evolving sound at all. It's just kind of a glass shatter that continues and then it reverses a little and that's it. What I think would work better here is actually starting with a little bit of a metal ronk to kind of show the bullet breaking apart. And you can layer in the glass impact with that, but it'd really not be nice to actually feel the bullet f hitting the cheek with an impact, cracking, breaking open, and then those bits dissolving in the air and so you can do that as a sound and you can start with a metal ronk that's bigger or 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 more defined that's you know not a giant metal rock ronk like a like a piece of sheet metal but something that fits you know a smaller bullet um and and then continually show it it could you know be like a, more of a you know, you, you want to layer in tones with that as well, because right now all we have is that's cool, but it's really just in kind of one frequency range. It's just a high glass thing that, that tinkles away, which is a great layer again, but it'd be nice to feel a bit more of an interesting impact here rather than just a window break. Um, sure. Yeah. Oh. Especially because we have this very crystalline kind of cool looking metal here. Anyway, I'm not going to linger on that too long. Some kind of dirt thing, uh, metal particles, maybe, um, you know, the sound of, of, of metal dust being dropped on, on glass or dropped on metal. Um, just kind of happening on the, on the sides and behind you just to feel like it's this, this explosion of what's inside the bullet. I would even consider taking actual um, gunshot sounds and processing them in cool ways to create this bullet impact in a very surreal way. And obviously you need to really get creative if you're gonna do that, um, but it's totally doable, right? You can take gunshots, um, let's see what you could do. Um, you, could, you could filter them, reverb them, and put a tremolo in the beginning so that you have this kind of distant and you, you kind of extend it, maybe put a Doppler, and that could happen maybe right before the impact. Because remember, when you have a, a moment that's an impact, a lot of times what makes that impact cool or special or more intense is the sound that happens right before it, right? Because you can have, or you can have, and it's like, you you hear that before is what actually gives it the um the specialness and the character. Anyway, let's continue. And I do like the little metal cracks they have going on. That's good. A little tone that tone. they did put a metal ronk in there, so you could they were feeling that. It's good. They felt like it was kind of boring, so they wanted to put a cool little character there. Here we'll play it one more time. So again, this gunshot's an example of um, this sounds like a musket shot. Right? It sounds like they took the sound of a musket shot. You can hear even the crackle. Um, and maybe they might have used a cannon, something like that. It sounds like an old gun recording, and it works. A lot of things like that help with slow motion. And what I like what they did here is they didn't just take a gunshot and pitch it down and, and, and maybe add a filter or something and think, okay, like it's slow motion, so I'm going to pitch it down and make it slower. No, they, they actually reached for a sound that felt like a slow motion sound instead of taking a normal sound and trying to process it into slow motion. If you're going to do that, you need to do it creatively and not just pitch it down and, you know, think literally. You need to think creatively about it. But I would go a little bit farther here. That's a good layer, that cannon shot. Well, what about the fire? You know, what about... Um, the, the, the metal tube sound of this this barrel here. So there's there's lots of other elements you can add in here that will accentuate the intensity and the coolness of this rather than just um, So, you know, I would add a little metal resonance rising up to it, you know, like the, you know, um, maybe t like filtered down gear creaks, like you can hear the inside of the gun before it shoots, like a um, Let's hear one more. 
the fire. I mean, we need a wow. We need a cool flash there. Something that's not too noisy, but something that definitely accentuates that light flash that we're getting. Because right now, you know, and if this played in a theater, people wouldn't hear this and go, oh, that sounds bad, right? I'm not saying this is bad sound design. This would play fine for most people, I'm sure. Um, but the goal here is to help us continue to elevate and continue to make sound that just makes these beautiful looking visuals pop even more uh, off the screen. So. Uh, so let's look at this bullet eject after that. I mean, definitely some fire stuff there. I'm sorry, but you see this fire swirling out of the barrel. I mean, there's such opportunities there. Processing animal sounds. It, it needs to have some kind of tonal element, right? Because you have this metal barrel in the gun that's exploding and shooting out this other piece of metal. It needs to have something that gives it a tonal character uh, and not just a uh, So think about tonality. Think about actually what's happening in there and then, and then not how to create that from sound, but how to actually find sounds... Um, that use that, you know, you can look at things like people dropping metal poles, people swinging metal poles to get that whoo thing and then and then finding ways to manipulate that so that it it sounds correct here. Um, and I'll do some future examples maybe if you guys want, just leave in the comments. If you want me to create something like I'm describing, I'm happy to. Uh, right now we're just going through the video though. So let's go to the shell eject. Okay, so th this is actually a little disappointing here. Um, whoops, I just hit back by accident. Um, let's go back to where we were. So this part, he literally just put a gun cock, a very basic library gun cock here. And this isn't what we're looking for. Um, I mean, the same thing there is, is metal gears slowed down. Um, Boom has a great library. They have a lot of really cool big metal gear clunking thing. There's there's a file in there called uh, Clockwork. There's another one um, called Crankmeister, I think. Um, and you can take those and and do different filtering to them. Um, hey guys, so let me actually just show you that that file really quick. So it's uh, the library is called uh, Boom Mechanicals here, uh, the Mechanicals library. I'll have a link for it in the uh, below. But here's one of the Clockwork files, for example. And this is just playing straight with no processing. So as you can hear, they have some really cool things in here. Uh, there's also Med's um, Crank, Crank Miner, sorry was the name of the. And so there's some really cool big kind of gear things here that you could use for even, even that could be something It might be a little too busy for the, for the shell being ejected for the, for the mechanics of the gun pushing it back. This. I mean, there's a lot, I mean, and you can start doing things like, uh, you know, let's just throw a limiter down here. This is Sound Miner, by the way. If you're a sound designer, I highly recommend it. It's a database program, collects, you know, you scan all your sounds into here. It, it just grabs them, it plays them from their original locations, uh, but it lets you, you know, pitch in real time. Uh, you have volume here, you can do like different things and record your performance. They have a sampler built in and they have a VST rack which has a bunch of slots and you can bring up all your, so I'm going to put a filter freak in here. I mean, I'm just messing around, I didn't pre-plan any of this. Um, just kind of want to show you like how these ideas can happen. And my computer is uh, going a bit slow, there we go. Uh, so let's just play this. So. You know, I mean, you can... Let's go back to this one. I mean... A little louder. Right? I mean, I literally just have Filter Freak and, and L2 limiter with, you know, 14 decibels of gain on it. Um, and then this is kind of giving it a cool movement here. You can hear it without Filter Freak, it's just, you know, it sounds very clanky and old fashioned, but you put Filter Freak on and all of a sudden it's a surreal gun movement. Right, I mean. So that's just an example of some of the stuff you can do. And, you know, obviously pitching it down if you want it to sound a little bigger, maybe adding some low end, let's put an R base on there. Let's have some fun, why not? Uh, this might sound bad because I'm you know, lower this a bit. 
Um, I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. So don't just put a gun cock there, guys. Let's 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 think of it. I mean, this is a this is a publicly available library. I mean, we can do um, a lot of these boom library sounds. I mean, they're gonna start getting distorted. Let's look at these meds, medium behind bars, short. This, uh, down, up a bit threshold here. I mean, so you get the idea. There's a lot of cool things you can do um, for this. And remember, this is the sound uh, we have. I believe it's here. That versus... So this stuff is easy to do. It's not, you know, you can find these files. Um, you know, I literally have this and mechanicals library. If you have some gun stuff you got to do, grab this library, look up, you know, meds is the stuff that's pre-designed. I need to, I need to talk to, to the guy who, who makes these libraries again, to remember what these prefixes actually mean. There's, there's, cause they have pieces and then they have more fully designed things, which are these, um, sequences. And if you're in a rush and you just want to get something done, grab some of these. I mean, without any processing, it still sounds, still sounds good, you know, but it's a little clicky. It's a little too raw. It's a little not surreal enough. So, I mean, that's, that's a good start. And then you can continue to add things. You can have, put a metal resonance, like a ping, you know, and a, make, make that moving. So it's not just a regular ping that everyone uses. Um, I mean, I don't think they have anything like that. Uh, shings in here. No. Um, boom library metal ring. So these are other boom sounds, by the way. I might put that in there. I mean, you can turn it down. I mean, that's a little too resonant for uh, doing something like this and putting a cool reverb on it, uh, doing a filter freak thing again or something. Making it move, making it interesting. Don't just take sounds, put them straight in, you know, mess with them a little. Even playing around with delays here, right? Because we don't always need to cover literally what we're seeing. This is a very surreal scene. It's a slow motion, stylized, very visually intensive scene. So we can play things that aren't just happening in the moving pieces here. We can, we can put a metal ring with a delay that continues on for two or three seconds after, you know, we can do uh, a filtered scream in the background. You know, it's, it's about the emotion and the storytelling of what's happening. You know, a, as a sound designer, you want to look at the scene and not just say, okay, he's ejecting a shell from his gun, gun cock. <laughs> no, what is this describing? This is him describing he's setting up for his next kill right? There's emotion there. There's intent there. And so we, we can help subtly deliver that message as opposed to just gun cock, click, clack. All right, let's cover like one more moment here. This is going to be a quick one. Okay, let's get that. We've done enough gun stuff here. Same notice before. You know, that was actually kind of a nice creative choice to not cover the bullets there. Um, I would have liked something, maybe some distant echo of a gunshot, like, you know, like fading behind you or um, some some screams, some emotions, adding some human elements to it, I think, because these cops look very futuristic and, you know, robotic, militarized, soulless. So the people who they're shooting at, you know, we want to add some pain there to contrast these these very ice cold characters we're seeing on screen. All right, let's listen to this part one more time. This is actually a really good thing that we'll end with.
Okay. Um. So. So. Yeah. So. So. So this this metal thing. Um. Let's 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 listen to it one more time, and think about what we're looking at. We're looking at metal rings. It looks like they're metal. Uh, they're rings coming together some seemingly magically because there's this glowing emblem on the front. So we assume it's magic. They're coming together like puzzle pieces, twisting around and forming something which activates this this spell or or this this uh, ritual or something that happens in the in the metal. So one more time. Okay, so this, if someone gave this to me, I would want them to redo it fully um, just because what we're hearing doesn't really align with, with what the story is telling us here. So um, if you actually close your eyes, I'm going to play it one more time. Close your eyes and listen to the sounds playing and try to visualize what you're hearing. Forgetting, you know, have amnesia for a moment. Forget that we saw that it's the metal rings. Just listen to the soundtrack and picture something. Okay, so I heard maybe one or two metal elements in there. And the rest just kind of sounded like um, generic whoosh buys, a uh, very high noisy bass, which is, is a way to do it. But let me suggest this. Um, these need to sound like ancient metal rings twisting together uh, with some you know great force causing them. So... Uh, we definitely need this to be metallic based, not air based. And so um, if you're a sound designer, you can think of yourself as a as a bender of the elements like an avatar, right? You don't want to be an air bender here. You want to be a, a metal bender if that was if that was a thing. Um, this I would I would definitely take metal shings, um, metal ringing. You can even take glass ringing, things like that and process them, bend them around, um, Doppler them, uh, stutter them up. Um, and then I would also add in some deeper elements to give it some power so it's not just all high endy. Um, you can even experiment, oh, my dog just ran through. You can even experiment with uh, more powerful elements. There are some good trailer hits and things like that in the Boom Library, which um, could give some, you know, there, there needs to be a little more weight behind this because what's really cool is when you have a small delicate looking object like this and you give it this this weight this sub and this low kind of you know you don't want it to sound muddy you want it most of it to be clear and characterized but having a little bit of umph in there to show that yes this is a metal ring but there's some big shit behind it that's causing it to come together and form can can make it feel more impactful because it's obviously an important story element if we're having a cutaway fully to this metal ring coming together so just to add some light <laughs> It, it needs more. It needs to. It needs to be a character in a, of itself. And so, um, I would also try. You know, I know I've suggested this like three or four times in this video, but uh, I would try processing some kind of screams or some animal cries or something to sound like metal. Um, you can pitch them around. You can pitch bend them. Um, you can do lots of things like that to make them sound screechy yet uh, more magical than just normal metal is because they have kind of a human or, or, or a living uh, feeling behind them when they come from actual living things. So, um, okay, I think that's it for this video, guys. Just a couple tips. This person, I wish them all the success. Um, so sorry if you see this and you feel like I'm being too harsh on you. Uh, I'm just trying to help other people out with this. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, please. Uh, just getting going with these, seeing if people like them. So uh, if you like them, I'll keep them coming. Uh, just let me know in the comments if there's anything specific you want to see. If you want to give me a reel to review or something like that, uh, I'm happy to do it. Anyway, have a good one. Stay safe. Stay home. Bye.